We're live. My news up here at Desaway in Kanda. This is News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I'm Natalie Fort. A look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. One person confirmed dead and 10 suspects arrested following Tuesday's clashes over the Kentampo waterfalls in Bono East region. The Bureau of National Investigations, BNI, recovers 6.5 million CDs from payroll fraud by the National Service Scheme. Also ahead this evening, Architectural Engineering Services Limited, consultants for the controversial Vice President's bungalow, request that the project be completed. Also tonight in business, real gross domestic product for the fourth quarter of 2018 was up by 6.8%. And on the international front this evening, Peru's ex-president Alan Garcia dies after shooting himself to avoid arrest. We've got the details of these stories and much more news coming to you live here on News 360. Remember, you can watch us all across the world on our website. It's 3news.com as well as on DSTV Channel 279. Let's get started with our very first story this evening as one person has been confirmed dead and 10 suspects arrested following the bloody clashes at Kintampo in the Bono East region on Tuesday, April 16. Two others who sustained injuries are responding to treatment at the Holy Family Hospital in Teshiman. Two groups, Dega Land Association and the Mo Youth Association, attacked some workers at the Kintampo waterfalls, claiming the land belonged to them and demanded that all government officials working there should vacate the facility. Police officers deployed to the area arrested six ringleaders. The youth groups later massed up at the police station in protest against the arrests and demanded their release. They mounted roadblocks to disrupt traffic flow, compelling the deployment of a reinforcement team, including military personnel. In an attempt to remove the wooden logs used as roadblocks, one military personnel's hand was reportedly slashed by one of the protesters. As the security personnel tried to calm down the situation, the other protester tried to snatch a rifle from one of the police officers. The trigger went off in the process, killing one person in the crowd instantly. Four others involved in the chaos were later arrested upon a tip-off and will be arraigned together with the ringleaders on Thursday, April 18. Let's stay on this issue a bit, a bit further. Joining me on the phone lines is Chief Inspector Augustine Kingsley Opong. He's the Bono Ahafo Regional Police PRO. Hello, good evening, and thanks for joining us this evening, Mr. Opong. Now, we understand that one person died as a result of the, the clashes. Can you confirm this? Good evening, Mr. Opong. Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Great. So I'm asking, one person has died. That's information reaching us. Can you confirm this? I'm saying that that is true. You can confirm that one person has been killed? One person is dead. One person is dead. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking, at this point, what is the situation looking like in Kintampo? Now, because police and the military have taken over everything in the car. People are moving to and fro for their daily jobs, and especially at the Kintampo waterfalls, the workers are working. The workers are working at the waterfalls now? Exactly. Okay, and, and have there been any arrests made, though, following the incident? Yes. So far, we have arrested 10 uh, youth who went to the place to disturb the peace of the people there. Oh, okay, and, and what charges have been preferred against these persons who've been arrested? Now, I can tell you that 
by tomorrow, you can send them, we have prepared everything and we are sending them to court to tell the court what, why and why they did that to the situation at the waterfalls. Okay, right. so tomorrow they would be arraigned before court. Exactly, my sister. Thanks for your time this evening and that updates there. That's Chief Inspector Augustine Kingsley Opong. He's a Bono Ahafo Regional Police PRO. We have eyes on this particular story. I'll give you updates tomorrow after the court hearing. But the Architectural Engineering Services Limited consultants for the controversial Vice President's bungalow are yet to be paid for their work on the $13 million multi-purpose building. AESL is, however, advising government to resume construction of the project. Work on official residence of the Vice President stalled following a controversy between the Kufordo led administration and officials of the previous regime on the cost of the project. Contractors of the project CONSA have been paid some seven million dollars after a series of variations. The late former Vice President Kwesi Misa Arthur raised queries on the variations with the Architectural Engineering Services Limited, the project consultant further causing an audit into the project. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia in 2017 expressed shock at the cost of the project. As at now, it still remains suspended and no work is going on now. We probably waiting for the government to take a decision as to the final use that the project is going to be put to. But it is imagined, however, that the AESL were not the initial consultants to the project. From the one, it was um, national security that brought in AESL to advise on certain aspects. The project was started by a different consultant firm, but when the next government came, they came to AESL and we picked it from what the initial consultants had done. AESL has not been paid for. We did make a submission and we were to negotiate the fee level with national security. But by virtue of the agency, the project was going on pending the conclusion of our fee charges and therefore payment. So as we sit today, we have not been paid anything. The acting director of the AESL, Robert Abugri, says the project must be completed. The state asset now, even though it's not completed, yeah. it needs to be completed and put to use. Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, James Kluche Aveji, says the government must make a determination on the progress of the project. The government should take decision so that the, ha the, the house can be completed. Whether it should be used by the vice president, whether it should be used by whoever, the project must be completed and put to use. That is all that I'm saying. If it is there, no decision is taken on it. It's wasting and it's public fun. Now, the BNI has recovered 6.5 million CDs from the ghost names on the payroll of the National Service Scheme. Executive Director of the Scheme, Mustafa Yusuf, appearing before the Public Accounts Committee, says the money has been deposited in BNI accounts instead of government's chest. Eight former directors of the scheme had to appear before the court over the matter. Subsequently, the Bureau of National Investigation has been investigating circumstances leading to the monies belonging to the scheme being paid to names that never existed. The Auditor General, in its 2016 report, said that a review of a sampled bank statement made available to them from the districts and the regions indicated that without authority from the management of the NSS, monies were transferred into BNI account. At that time, we had a special case, and that special case was the ghost name scam that hit the scheme at the time. Most, and the investigative body that was signed by government to investigate that particular issue was the BNI. BNI, in their operations, then decided to create a special account, and that special account was to collect money that was uh, allegedly uh, taken from service personnel allowance account by the district officers and also regional officers and national officers who were implicated. 
Executive Director of the National Service Key, Mustafa Yusuf, justified the transfers. We've written and the BNR responded that because the case is still pending in court, they are using the money as an exhibit until the case is judgment is made on the case. BNR is unable to release the money back. Yority General was emphatic on how the money must be recovered. On the scheme's farms, the Audit General revealed that with the exception of a power farm in the Greater Accra region, all the regional farms have collapsed with machines and other equipment left under the mercy of the weather. Let's get into the presidency now. And President Kofuado has challenged the Bono Regional Minister, Evelyn Komi Richardson, to shame her critics and detractors by working hard. Well, the minister, whose nomination you recall, the minority refused to approve, was sworn into office together with the OT Regional Minister, Kwesio Usu Yaboa, at the Jubilee House here in Accra. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear. The swearing in into office of the two completes the set of ministers appointed for the newly created regions. Evelyn Ama Kumi Richardson's nomination generated controversy in Parliament with a minority opposing her approval. They raised issues with a certificate and urged the House to reject her approval. However, Parliament, through a secret ballot, voted in her favour by 124 votes out of the total 210 votes. President Ikufuado encouraged the Bono Regional Minister to put the controversy behind her, work hard to justify the confidence reposed in her. But you had a strong vote of approval, stand on that and work to shame those who oppose your appointment. And then by your work too, those who supported your appointment will know that they did not support you in veil and that, they will be, that their confidence in you will be fully vindicated. We are on a you're entering our government more than halfway through its lifetime. But nevertheless, you're beginning something new. The old Bronx Afro is no more. There's a, there's a new entity called Bronx Region, just as Uti Region is a new concept in the governance of our nation. He urged the Uti Regional Minister to work in the interest of the people to justify the purpose for the creation of the region. The former diplomat, Kwesi Ousu Yabua, on behalf of his colleague, promised to work hard to keep up with the pace of government development agenda. We will not disappoint you. We will do our utmost to ensure that all your programs will be successful. Now, the governing New Patriotic Party has set May 18 to conduct an extraordinary delegates conference in the six new regions and special regional executive committee meetings. The general secretary of the party, John Buedu, announcing the modalities for the conference and treats it would-be candidates to respect the rules of engagement and exhibit a high sense of discipline. The decision to hold the Extraordinary Regional Delegates Conferences and Special Regional Executive Meetings has been necessitated by the party obligation to fill vacant regional executive positions occasioned by the recent regional reorganization. The Extraordinary Conferences will be held in the newly created regions comprising OT, Western North, Bono East, Ahafo, Savannah and Northeast regions. The term of office of the officers shall be contaminous with all regional executives. We are doing the election in 2019. The term of office of all other regional executives in all the regions will be ending by 2022. So these officers to be elected will also, uh, their term of office will also end in 2022. The Special Regional Executive Committee meetings will be held under the supervision of a national representative and shall come off from May 3 to 5 in Bunu East, Northern, Western and Volta regions. Regional Executive Committee meeting shall be held in strict compliance with Article 924. The Regional Executive Committee will elect another officer of the party. So, for instance, in the Regional Executive Committee, if there's a vacancy for secretary position, the Regional Executive Committee, when they meet, will elect 
add another officer, maybe the treasurer or the woman organizer or the NASA coordinator or the youth organizer to become the secretary or the treasurer. The general secretary of the party, John Buedu, cautioned delegates and aspirants to conduct themselves in the upcoming exercise. The party wishes to appeal to all stakeholders, especially there will be candidates for the various positions in the Extraordinary Delegates Conference and their supporters to respect the rules of engagement and conduct this exercise with the necessary candor. Applicants who wish to contest will have to pay 1,000 cities for the chairperson position and 500 cities for other positions. Picking of nomination is on Tuesday, April 29 and 30. From the NPP, let's move into the NDC. The National Democratic Congress, NDC, has questioned the Electoral Commission's decision to conduct the upcoming limited registration at the district level rather than at the electoral area level. So at a news conference in Accra, the party insisted the move would prevent potential voters from registering ahead of this year's district level elections and referendum on whether to elect DCEs or not. According to the NDC, recent decisions by the Electoral Commission regarding registration go contrary to previous laid-down systems of capturing voters onto the electoral roll. General Secretary of the Party, Johnson Esiedun Ketia, said voter registration since 2012 has seen at least 80% of projected registrants captured onto the register. He compared it to the recent referendum in 47 districts ahead of the creation of the six new regions, which recorded 47.81% of the projected 100,000 registrants. The commission under the leadership of Afarijan did this mass registration in 2012. The projected figure was 14 million, 13.7 uh, million names were captured and the percentage of success was 98. Then limited registration in 2014 also under Dr. Kojo Afarijan. The projected figure was 1 million. Then the uh, captured was 857,000 and the success rate was 85%. Then, limited registration in 2016 under Charlotte Osei. Projected figure was 1.2 million to be captured. We ended up capturing 1,069,000. And again, the success rate was 89.11%. Now, under Jean Mensa, the first limited registration, the projected figure was 100,000 to cover only 47. Districts. The actual captured was 47,000, and then the success rate 47 percent. And the same Jimensa is going into a second one using the same methods, and we are warning that there is trouble ahead of us. To the NDC, the EC's decision to use 250 registration centers at its district offices for Ghanaians who have turned 18 years and new registrants are woefully inadequate compared to the 6,000 centers used in previous exercises. It is also important to note that whereas her predecessors have both deployed registration machines to 6,000 centers at each electoral area to cover registrants during the last nationwide registration, limited registration exercise. The current leadership intends to register all Ghanaians who have attained 18 years or were unable to register during previous nationwide exercises at 250 centers at the EC district offices. This is a registration exercise that will be used for district level elections and referendum at the same time. So it means that the value of this election is even bigger, higher than previous district level elections. The party also asked the EC to justify why it intends to compile a new voters register ahead of the 2020 elections, indicating that it must be tabled properly at an IPAC meeting for deliberation by all parties before adoption. 
That is a matter the NDC considers very important, and it ought to be tabled properly for a thorough discussion by all the stakeholders. We will need to be told what is essentially wrong with the current register and what changes are needed to right the wrongs in the register. As a result of the available facts, we demand an immediate reconsideration of the suggested mode of the limited registration from this level to the electoral area level so as to allow for mass participation of all eligible voters. We also demand, as a matter of necessity, an immediate public apology in respect of the outright misrepresentation by the Commission on the purported decisions of IPAC on the compilation of a new voters register. The Electoral Commission at a news conference on Tuesday spelled out a number of decisions taken at a recent IPAC meeting, including the new venues for limited registration exercise and reasons why it wants to compile a new voters register. According to the NDC, some of the issues were simply raised at the IPAC meeting, but no concrete decisions were taken on them, contrary to the EC's claims. Let's now turn to our MTN video reports this evening as our citizen journalist Obibini Abrantia reports on the state of the Yaohema African Faith JHS in the Sunyani municipality of the Bono region. So this is Yaohema African Faith JHS. It is in the Sunyani municipality. There is a structure for the GHS class. The people always level their class before they can sit. And when it is raining, it is holiday for the people. There is the situation that we find ourselves in. There is a structure of the GHS class. And this is where the teachers sit. This is their staff room. Well, just like Ubibini Abrant here, remember yeah, you can also send us your visual report via WhatsApp number. It's 055 Stay with us. There's a lot coming up tonight here in the world of business and sports and in entertainment as well. We'll be back. Hello, good evening and welcome to the business news segment on News 360. My name is Park Kusiasari. In our very first story, NCI Insurance Company has opened its Tema branch. The opening of the new branch is to enable the company to get closer to its clients to deliver its innovative products and services. NC Insurance Company started operations in Ghana in 2010 as a general insurer offering non-life insurance products including motor, travel, fire, marine and general accident. The company has a strong capitalization with a 221% international resultant solvency margin and a regulatory solvency of about 740% as against the regulatory benchmark of 150%. Managing Director Yao Adum Boatin said the company has redefined its internal processes in underwriting and claims with a view to provide positive experience to clients. Our Liquidity has been assessed as exceptionally strong based on our capitalization and the quality of our assets. So the rating affirms NCI Insurance financial strength, our adequate risk management practices, and good corporate governance in line with the company's commitment in providing positive experience to our customers. What we are witnessing here today is one of our commitments to conveniently serve the people of Tema. The Deputy National Insurance Commissioner Kofi Ando said all the relevant stakeholders will be engaged to promote the growth of the industry while implementing rules and regulations to protect the rights of customers. It's uh, mainly some regulations to require the insurance companies to treat customers fairly. When you apply for your claim, the insurance company must acknowledge receipt 
and tell you when they will get back to you and tell you whether they will pay the claim or not. And then once they admit, they must tell you when they will pay. And when that time comes, they must pay. When you have a complaint, they must resolve your complaint. When you tell them that I have a complaint with this policy, they must listen to you and, and, and solve your problem for you so that people will have confidence in, in, in insurance. NC Insurance Company is a subsidiary of Group Sensia, a Pan-African financial services group which currently operates in 12 countries in Western and Central Africa. Right away from insurance, facts behind the figures by the Ghana Stock Exchange will soon be obligatory for all issuers. The managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Kofi Yamwa, gave the hint here in Accra. The fact behind the figures program is a platform provided by the Ghana Stock Exchange to meet brokers, the media, institutional investors and representatives of the exchange. It was the turn of Access Bank Ghana, which has 52 branches and agencies with 1,303 employees, 700,000 plus customers and 632 million cities in shareholders funds. As at December last year, the total assets of the bank in Ghana was 105.1 million cities. The gross earnings was 543.671 million cities, an increase of 12% from the 485.454 million cities in 2017. Thus, the managing director, Olomedi Olatunye, indicated has been achieved through innovation, proactive customer relationship management, and strong corporate governance. So we identified sectors on the retail space and on the wholesale space in terms of loan, loan growth. Uh, on the retail space, we are going to be to demonstrate the fact that we support financial inclusion of the government and of this administration. So we do a lot of things to grow the retail banking book of the bank. For the bank, agriculture and export financing is key. Africa is about trade. Uh, so we are, we are collaborating with in, uh, international partners, for instance, DEG, to grow trade uh, for German businesses, import and out, uh, export out of Ghana. And as we see opportunities in the manufacturing sector, we'll also grow our bloom book responsibly uh, for those that miss the risk assessment criteria of the bank. Yep. Then we identified uh, companies that export out of Ghana. Away from the banking industry, real gross domestic products for the first, first for the fourth quarter of 2018 grew by 6.8 percent compared to the 5.5 percent recorded for the fourth quarter in 2017. As the service sector continues to drive the country's economic growth, now the GDP estimate, including oil at constant 2013 prices for the fourth quarter of 2018, was 39,473.2 million CDs. The gross domestic product at constant prices means it has been discounted by the effects of inflation. The provisional fourth quarter 2018 GDP at current prices, including oil, was estimated at 80,874.0 million cities, compared to 67,940.9 million cities in 2017. The provisional fourth quarter 2018 GDP at current prices excluding oil was estimated at 77,010.1 million cities. The value for fourth quarter of 2017 was 64,466.6 million cities. So you see the effect that oil is having in terms of the differences in the growth rates between these two periods. The picture that we see compared to the quarterly basis doesn't vary much. This shows that the services sector is driving the economy followed by the industry and the agriculture subsectors. The provisional constant annual GDP estimate including oil for 2018 is 154,547.7 million cities while the estimate for 2017 was 134,438.2 million. The industry subsector is what we need to put emphasis on because we see the industry sector starting with a figure of 0.9% in 2014. It stays fairly about the same in 2015 with a figure of 1.9%. And between 2015 and 2017, we see a, an increase of about three percentage points between 2015 and 2016, and more than 10 percentage points between 2016 and 2017. 
The spike between 2016 and 2017 is what we need to put emphasis on and begin to ask which policy directives accounted for that. The year-on-year -year GDP growth for agriculture is 4.8% for 2018, while industry sector recorded 10.6%. The growth rate of the services sector decreased from 3.3 in 2017 to 2.7 percent in 2018. However, the services sector remained the largest sector with its share of GDP increased from 46.0 to 46.3 percent in 2018. Government statistician Professor Samuel Kwabna Enim compares Ghana's growth rate with the global trend. The IMF has predicted that moving forward, Ghana and Sudan will be one of the fastest growing economies with about 8.8%. And what we see with the 2018 figures clearly shows that using the regional averages, Ghana is showing, as I shared with you earlier on, an annual real GDP growth rate of 6.3%. And this figure is greater than the regional averages with Asia and Pacific recording 5.3%, with emerging markets recording 4.5%. For emphasis, the world growth rate on annual basis is 3.6%. Well, that's all for the business news segment here on News 360. Thanks very much for watching. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Over to you, Alfred. Thank you, Pakwasi Business. Let's get into uh, Guinness Ghana Brewers has presented 50,000 CDs, assorted drinks, and other items to support the 20th anniversary celebration of Asante or Tuvo Say to the Second. The pres uh, presentation is in appreciation of the support Guinness has enjoyed in the Asante Kingdom over the years. Guinness Ghana Brewery started eight operations in Kumasi in 1962. The presentation is to appreciate Asante Man's contribution to the growth of the Guinness brand and to support the Asante Hene's 20th anniversary on his ascension to the Golden Stool. Chairman of the Guinness Ghana Breweries Limited, Felix Ado, said the company is committed to the development of the Asante Kingdom. And since you have given us peace and stability for the past 20 odd years that we show up here, and participate in this wonderful celebration. He commended the Asante Hene for his contribution towards the country's peace and development. For two, for, uh, we have followed your progress since you are sending it through. And we've been part of your stability and peace coexistence in this country. We are actually not only for Asante Man, yeah, for the entire Hello there, good evening. My name is Miriam Osei Ejiman. So this is just the Rana Corner and we're asking, where will you be? Well, all the action will be at Dickity this weekend as the much anticipated on New FM Dickity Easter train storms the tourism destination with fun filled activities. Project's lead, Bright Asempa, is positive the trip to JKT will off offer party goers the best Easter experience. JKT! JKT! Well, it's obvious you have to be in JKT. I mean, just for one thing, uh, sign the fan of it, there's a lot to learn about JKT. JKT sit on a peninsula with the Akosumbo Dam as well. It's going to be very exciting. Now, there's something about JKT and the people in uh, there, you know, very hospitable. The four-day fan-packed event begins on Friday, April 19 to Easter Monday. The Unia FM Easter trip to JKT will afford revelous, memorable and unforgettable experience. It's a great right from Friday when we get to JKT, we're going to have the Aquaba night, but of course we're going to have a lot of stopovers and the final day destination is Jakiti, where we're going to have the Aquaba Bash and the football gala will be on as well and in the evening is going to be the street jam that is the big bash. Yeah. But there is something special about Jakiti this year and that is what is happening at the Akosombo Volta Hotel. Saturday evening we're going to enjoy the Koozi Live Band and arrive uh, right from 6 to 10 p.m. From there, we move to the Adwa Nightclub 
and uh, we'll put on our dancing shoes. The fan continues on April 20th, where audience will experience a happy hour jam followed by an inter-community football gala. A special boat cruise will also be organized on the Volta Lake on Sunday, April 21st. Don't be left out of the fun as the team has lined up an exciting list of activities to thrill patrons. This year is going to be a big bank. Prior has on board and Prior has promised to shake your kitty like never before. You know, they've come together and they are promising us a wonderful performance at the beach the Easter Monday. You have to be there. <laughs> Well, you have to be there. I will be there and I'll be looking forward to seeing you at Jackie Boss of Black Avenue Music, Desmond Kwesi Blackmore, a.k.a. D Black, is not at all impressed with the performance of outgoing music president Obor. Whilst reviewing Obor's eight-year tenure, the rapper said the musical president performed below average, noting he failed to deliver his promise to musicians. He has performed below average. The most important thing for me was royalty collection, and it has not gone well under him, he stressed. According to the rapper and artist manager, Obor couldn't fulfill his promise of improving the lots of musicians. On the scale of 100, D. Black gave Obor 40%. Well, that's about it for entertainment news tonight. That's more on 3news.com. I'm Miriam Mosey-Edgman. Have a good evening. Good evening, Miriam. And all roads lead to Jackie T. Just it does. so you know. <laughs> Everything else is free. You are not paying any gate fee or nothing. Yes, yeah, it'll yeah. be exciting. The fun is free. Uh, the fun is the free. Fun is free. On behalf of the rest of the team, we say thank you. My name is Alfred Okansi. I'm Natalie Ford. For a lot more news, do visit our website, 3news.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening.